Welcome. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And this is James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, and we both welcome you back to another jam-packed episode of The New World Next Week. Of course, you can find it at NewWorldNextWeek.com. James, I wish we could talk about movies and sports and all those other kind of distractions that, that take up the time and the minds of, of folks out there. But this is the real March Madness. Beware the Ides of March, as they say, as I think we are entering into a, a rather dangerous time for the world. And we'll begin with a story from the Chicago Sun-Times and KESQ and links from all around the web, which, of course, we'll provide all of our cited sources in the show notes. Top Gun aircraft carrier USS Enterprise starting final voyage. When the makers of Top Gun, the, of course, 86 Tony Scott film, Filming aboard the USS Enterprise, they donated a set of black fuzzy dice to liven up the ship's otherwise drab interior. A quarter century later, the dice will still be dangling inside the tower of the Big E as the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier sets sail on its final voyage. The trinket is a reminder of the ship's storied 50-year history that includes action in several wars, a prominent role in the Cuban Missile Crisis, and serving as a spotter for John Glenn's historic orbit of the Earth, which we just had the 50th anniversary of. That's a longer, fluffier piece that gets into kind of the human interest angle, but let's break it down from KESQ.com. Navy carrier USS Enterprise on final voyage, which of course they can't help make that Star Trek joke. The legendary aircraft USS Enterprise, America's oldest active duty warship, was steaming in the Atlantic this past Monday on the last appointment of its 50-year career. The carrier and its crew of 3,100 left Norfolk Naval Station in Virginia this past Sunday in the ship's 22nd deployment. And of course, they're heading over to the hot spots, Iran and Syria. James, I've been following something on my site and on my show and even on my Twitter feed using my own created hashtag Titanic memes as these stories of essentially what I think we're looking at is some kind of destruction over water. And I've collected stories, whether it's boats capsizing off the coast of Oregon or California or, of course, the Costa Concordia and the upcoming 100th anniversary of the Titanic disaster as some type of analogy you know the world's largest metaphor is is about to hit another iceberg so we see things heating up around the world and the biggest story here in the states today james the highly unusual move as all the marines were disarmed for panetta's speech in afghanistan which of course he's going to afghanistan on a damage control move after a recent marine murdered i believe 16 people and of course it's the drugging all of those things going on. We also have news of Iran terror hearings in the House next week, where essentially, ultimately, everything seems to be pointing to a new world war. James, you can take or leave any part of that that you'd like. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had several people, probably a dozen people now, email me the link to a video that's going on around right now talking about the Enterprise and, uh, and how it could be being set up to be the next uh, big false flag event that might set off you know, an Iranian war or however that will play out. And I'm glad to see that people are on this and that people are spreading the word about it because it's something that I've talked about numerous times and I will continue talking about because I think it's a good analogy that uh, the false flag trick that they play on us is really nothing more than a magician parlor trick where they uh, try to get us to look over here while they're doing something over here. And the reason they keep doing it over and over and over and over and over is because it continues to work on so much of the public. But that, I really think that we're, we're truly having a devastating effect on that trick because exactly like a magician trick, all you have to do is tell the audience beforehand what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. And the trick loses its power. They can't pull one over, at least not on the people who are actually awake and paying attention, which is a growing percentage of the population each and every day. So honestly, I, I'm glad that people are spreading the word about this and getting the word out. Of course, the flip side of that is, I mean, the NSA and all of the, uh, you know, Google spy devices and everything that uh, the, the false flag perpetrators would have up their sleeves obviously know that uh, there's a lot of commotion about the enterprise. So all they have to do is get us all concerned and putting all our eggs in that basket, and then they can pull something else uh, somewhere else. So, so it's the type of thing we have to remain ever vigilant of. But I th I'm glad to see that at least this, uh, this idea is out there, because once again, it makes, them, it makes it a lot harder for them to pull off something like that. 
Uh, so we'll move James to our our second story, but of course it it all builds on on what we've just seen and what we've just discussed on on a number of levels. And again, wouldn't you know it? We have to go to sort of foreign press to find out stories of fundamental importance to the United States here, but from Russia today. The impeach Obama bill on the use of military without Congress approval, a high crime and misdemeanor. An American military attack on Syria could effectively lead to the impeachment of President Barack Obama. Congressmen say that any war without congressional authorization would be unconstitutional. Republican Representative Walter B. Jones Jr. has come up with a resolution demanding Obama's impeachment in case... His administration starts another military action without the approval of Congress. All the ones already, I guess, aren't enough, but continuing. This came as a reaction to the American Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta, announcing that in order to carry out the offensive, the U.S. military needs permission from the U.N. and NATO alone. Jones's resolution states the prime authority to rule on the attack is the U.S. Congress, but not international bodies, be it NATO or U.N., Quote, expressing the sense of Congress that the use of offensive military force by a president without prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress constitutes an impeachable high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution, end quote, Jones's resolution said. In an exchange which occurred at the session of the Senate Armed Services Committee, U.S. Secretary of Defense Panetta, who is, of course, hunkering down in Afghanistan as we speak, wearing flak jackets as these alleged attacks are, are supposedly happening. He basically said that if the obama Sai administration decides to attack Syria, they would merely inform Congress after the decision has been made. The Obama administration has allegedly started a fresh discussion on possible military strike on Syria with its allies, the Washington Post reports, American officials have yet to confirm the report saying that at this point they rule out military involvement in Syria's internal conflict. There are reports that British and Qatari troops, as well as, of course, the CIA and Mossad, are already covertly involved with the Syrian conflict. James, more on the Obama impeachment bill now in Congress from World Net Daily, and we'll give you just the straight link to the House Con Res 107 on the thomasloc.gov. We've got other interesting bits from our friends at stratrisks.com. CIA chief holds closed door meeting on Syria with Turkish prime minister. And James, I, I do have some other related updates, but do you want to take this story on the impeachment before I add those on? Well, yeah, I mean, just clearly on its face, uh, everything that Obama has been doing over the past uh, three years has been completely, I mean, impeachment worthy, if anything is, um, just treasonous, uh, terrible uh, crimes against uh, the republic that, that uh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, they, uh, for everything from his uh, invoking of the, the idea of preventive detention and uh, the signing of the NDAA and uh, the, the assertion of the right to be able to kill American citizens without any trial and all of the just insane off-the-charts tyranny that he's uh, invoked. And uh, exactly in the same way as Kucinich brought the impeachment uh, against uh, Bush, which of course went nowhere, I... I, I mean, let's not be let's not be uh, too cynical, but let's not be too hopeful. I mean, this is not going to go anywhere. Washington is bought and paid for by the uh, the Goldman Sachs and other banksters that are in control of them and pull their strings. But uh, but it is important that we we shine light on this because at least more people will will start to understand what's really going on. But uh, sadly enough, in the uh, the bottom of that RT article that that comes from, there's a comment there talking about, well, well, Bush was so much uh, so much worse, and Bush did all these other things. I, I can't trust this website anymore. As if it's still about <laughs> Bush versus Obama. It's, I mean, people who are locked in that matrix, there's just truly no hope for them anymore. So, so mm -hmm. at any rate, I mean, we have to point out that this is treason, and it is impeachable, much more than Clinton lying about a blowjob. But, uh, but it just goes to show what happens and what doesn't happen in Washington. So I'll add on some related updates to this. Unfortunately, Obama has already signed the anti-protest trespass bill. Only days after clearing Congress, Obama signed his name to H.R. 347 last Thursday, officially making it a federal offense to cause a disturbance at certain political events, essentially criminalizing protest in the United States. James, you and I went over this story two weeks ago on New World Next Week. And on a different note, the boys' night out for Obama and U.K. Prime Minister Cameron costing U.S. taxpayers at least $365,000 so they could go watch some March Madness, which, you know, I, I, 
probably really would help take your mind off the fact that your friends back in the UK keep getting arrested for widespread bribery and phone hacking scandals. But James, our third and final story, speaking of gangsters and banksters, with stories from the Globe and Mail.com as well as Money and the original op-ed from the New York Times, why I'm leaving Goldman Sachs. Resignation letter, just the latest blow to Goldman's integrity. Banker Greg Smith's resignation from Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated laid bare a culture he called toxic at a firm that he said sold out clients for fees. Yet, as shocking as it is, it's only the second most damning indictment of the bank's behavior in recent days. Getting to the, the worst would be a recent judge's ruling. So, jumping down, the problem for Goldman is that it's hard to question the motives of Judge Leo Strein, the lead judge on the Delaware Court of Chancery and perhaps the most revered judge in the United States when it comes to corporate law. In a February 29th ruling, he said pretty much the same thing about Goldman Sachs as Mr. Smith does. They sell out their clients for anything it takes, anything that will get them more Skrilla, if you will, and they call their clients Muppets. They make fun of them. Suckers. Marks. James, what's your, what's your take on this? Is this a, a nice move? Fortunately, you see a guy kind of stepping away, or even as the illustration that accompanies this, you see one vulture flying away from the feeding frenzy carcass of the giant squid. Yeah, well, that's, that's pretty much what I read into this. No, I mean, uh, it, it's, uh, I, I hope people will go and read the actual original op-ed just to see what it's about, but uh, I think it's not exactly as damning an indictment of the epitome of evil in our world that would be possible for a true uh, Goldman Sachs insider. So, of course, now Goldman is trying to attack the messenger and say, oh, he's not an executive director, so they're, they're mislabeling him. He's only a VP, one of 10,000, blah, blah, blah. So they're, they're trying to spin it off into that. But the real point of this is the, the things that were left out. I mean, to his credit, in that, in that op-ed, he cites the, uh, the fabulous fab, the Fabrice Torre thing, the SEC investigation, even Tybee's Gold, Goldman Sachs uh, vamp vampire squid article. But, uh, but it doesn't get into the heart of, I mean, government Sachs and the fact that the Treasury Department is absolutely infested with Goldman Sachs. Uh, insiders or uh, or looking at the Eurocrats, the technocrats right now that are parachuting in to save the day in Europe as uh, the EU begins to collapse. Mario Draghi and Mario Monti and Papa Demos and all of them, Goldman Sachs insiders, or uh, or or there's a new Bloomberg report with even more more details about the uh, how Goldman Sachs help, helped to scuttle Greece by. Uh, giving them this loan swa or this uh, loan deal that literally the Greek government itself didn't even understand and ended up paying much more than they ever thought, and uh, it was it was designed to try to help them hide their debt from the EU as they tried to get on to the EU. And of course now Greece is collapsing, Athens is on fire, the EU is tanking, but Goldman Sachs continues record profits year after year. So. Um, mm -hmm. So this is not a big damning indictment, but at the very least, hopefully it'll get more attention back on the issue of who's really puppeteering the economy and what strings they're pulling as, uh, as they're doing God's work, to use Blank Fine's phrase. And I know if you dig back in the archives of the Media Monarchy show, you go back to 2007 and early 2008 looking at, hey, this, this kind of strange upstart Obama guy he pretty much seems to be funded completely by Goldman Sachs. So, again, none of this is a big surprise. It's just interesting to see what, what levels of, of limited hangout come along. James, before we wrap this episode up, I'd like to make just a, a, a brief self-promotional note, if I may. Again, on the note to beware the Ides of March. I'm just about to publish my latest mixtape from Media Monarchy. It's going to be number 15, and I call it Pacific Lifeline. And it kind of gets into these themes of Titanic memes that we've been discussing. But, of course, I go back to being a DJ. So music and media are the things that I love, and that's why I call it MediaMonarchy.com. So thanks for letting me mention that. Looking forward to it. Talk to you next week. All right. Thank you.